So quickly, a few shots. Um, we're gonna have, we're gonna have one. Do you want the guest book? Yeah. Okay. 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 One here of guest book. Starting off the news this week, a new paper published in the journal Astrophysical Journal Letters has revealed some incredibly interesting and potentially some dangerously exciting details about the exoplanet K218b. Using data from the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers have discovered the presence of both carbon dioxide and methane in this planet's atmosphere, which lies about 111 light years away from Earth. Upon its red dwarf star's discovery, Astronomers were excited to find K218b's position in the habitable zone of its star, the zone that would allow life like that found on Earth to potentially begin. While being significantly larger and more massive than Earth, K218b may hold even further promise for life, as a weak signal suggesting the presence of dimethyl sulfide was detected. Only future observations from the James Webb Space Telescope will be able to fully confirm this, and we tantalizingly wait until it does, for dimethyl sulfide is a molecule only found on Earth when it is produced by life, mainly incredibly small organisms like phytoplankton, but life all the same. Of course, it would be impossible, for now, to assume that life certainly exists on this other planet just because of the presence of this molecule, and further confirmation would have to take place. That might take a while. And in other news, we head back to the developing story of the lifting of the whaling ban in Iceland. Since the ban was lifted at the very end of last month, three fin whales have tragically died due to whaling. The whaling ban was put in place in June until the end of August, after reports that the fin whales were taking too long to die. Stringent new regulations have been put in place and, controversially, the ban was lifted. Two whaling boats went out to sea on Wednesday the 6th of September to hunt their first fin whales of the season, and the hunting was hampered by bad weather and fog, but despite this, they returned to shore on Friday with the bodies of three slaughtered fin whales. Due to more bad weather, the boats are not expected to go hunting again for a few days. The whaling season ends at the end of September, and the whaling license runs out at the end of the year. The eyes of many conservation groups are in Iceland, campaigning the government not to renew the whaling quota, thus putting an end to this barbaric and outdated practice. And now over to Ben, with the cow news. Thanks Doug. First up in the paleontology news for this week, we have the naming and description of a new species of avialan theropod dinosaur from China. Called Thujianvenator prodigiosus, the rock formation that this animal comes from is actually very important, as it dates to the late Jurassic and has also recently been documented to contain an amazing diversity of vertebrate fossils that appear to have lived in a swampy environment, and the authors of this paper have named the fossiliferous horizons the Zhenghe fauna. Thanks to volcanic deposits in the formation, the authors were also able to use zircon uranium lead dating to estimate an age for the fauna of between 148 to 150 million years ago. So very exciting to be learning more about this interesting newly identified paleoenvironment. But anyway, getting back to Fujian Veneta, the material includes a partial skeleton missing the head, but otherwise is fully articulated. It's found to be an avialan, in a basal position branching off the lineage eventually leading to modern birds. Fujian Veneta has an unusual mixture of features similar to other stem avialans, as well as troodontids and dromaeosaurids, indicating that the evolution of these dinosaurs was very mosaic with different parts of the anatomy evolving differently and at different rates. Fujian Veneta is also entirely unique among Mesozoic avialans for having particularly long hind legs, which means this animal probably had a more terrestrial lifestyle, possibly wading through its swamp-like habitat, instead of other early avialans which appear better adapted for life in the trees or aerial settings. So, a significant find in further unravelling bird evolution, as well as a very exciting announcement of an interesting new fossil fauna. Next for the paleontology news we have another new theropod dinosaur, this time an ornithomimosaur from Japan. This new ornithomimosaur, the famous bird mimic dinosaurs, has a pretty awesome name, Tyrannomimus fukuiensis. The fossil material is not particularly extensive, but there's enough anatomical information preserved to recognise this as something distinct, and it seems the bones that have been recovered represent multiple individuals. It dates to the early Cretaceous and has been classified as a dinochirid, 
the branch of the ornithomimosaurs including the wonderfully bizarre giant Dinochirus mirificus. Due to its age, this would make Tyrannomimus the oldest definite Dinochirid known, providing more information on the early evolution of these dinosaurs. The reason for it being named Tyrannomimus, meaning tyrant mimic, is due to certain features of the hip looking very much like a Tyrannosauroid. The authors also explain that a dinosaur from the late Jurassic of Portugal, Avia Tyrannus, looks very similar in many ways to Tyrannomimus, and so Avia Tyrannus might not actually be a Tyrannosauroid as previously thought, but instead could be the oldest known ornithomimosaur. This would then fill in an implied 20 million year long ghost lineage that exists between when the earliest Maniraptorans are known from the mid-Jurassic, and when the first confirmed ornithomimosaurs appear in the early Cretaceous, as ornithomimosaurs would be expected to be found in the Jurassic. So some interesting implications for the evolution of these amazing dinosaurs, plus a cool new name to go with it. That's it from me for this week, back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.